Okay. All right, so, you know, thank you guys for coming to, this is, um, the reason we're holding this meeting is some of that you, some of you have been there before and you've heard of Justice for Hindus before, but we weren't uh, a legal corporation. So in, uh, it was about the end of December that we actually got our corporate status. And so now we're officially able to operate, you know, in the United States and other countries. We're not a, we're not an underground organization anymore. Um, and so we were able to open up a bank account and uh, enter the realm of officialdom. Um, we are here today, we're doing the launch at the ISPAD Center here in Queens, which is the, uh, the Indian Subcontinent Partition Documentation Project, which is uh, run by Sachi uh, Dasadar, his son Shubo Dasadar, so I think it's a, a fitting place for us to have uh, our first official meeting. And um, you're going to meet some of the other young activists that we've attracted here in New York City and in other parts of the world to our cause. Um, I, before I start, just, I want to uh, advertise the center, ISPAD. Some of you that are here have been on the ISPAD website. You've given your testimonials about your uh, experience under partition. Some of you are from Sindh, Pakistan, or Bangladesh, and other places, and you've uh, um, been able to describe exactly what is happening to a lot of people in South Asia and other parts of the world. Um, uh, Sachin Dastar is best known for his book, uh, Empire's Last Casualty. The uh, Indian subcontinent, vanishing Hindu and other uh, and other minorities, where he discusses exactly you know the politics behind what is happening and why we're seeing why we're seeing what we're seeing in today in South Asia, why we're seeing so much bloodshed, why we're seeing uh, the continuation of uh, basically Hindu genocide in in the region, even after the partition. You know why is it that we gave people. Why is it that we gave people their own land that they required, but they're still, you know, they're, the, the bloodshed didn't end. They're, they're not going to be happy until they've cleansed their land of all of these Hindus. Um, interesting, um, I was preparing for this meeting and I got a letter from Dr. Uh, Dastadar, and I want to read it before I start because I think that this is a, the type of project that I think this is something that we can do here as Justice for Hindus in the United States. So uh, Dr. Dastadar wrote this to uh, Mayor Rahm Emanuel, who is the mayor in Chicago. And um, the uh, title of the letter is Renaming of Street After Bangladeshi President. He says, I understand from papers in New York and subcontinent that you have renamed a street after the late Bangladesh President General Zia Ur Rahman following a Chicago tradition. Some in Bangladesh consider him to be a hero and a great military man who participated in independence of Bangladesh. Many others see him as the general who removed secularism from Bangladesh's constitution, pardoned, pardoned mass murderers who committed genocide against the Hindu minority and secular Muslim, Muslims, pardoned killers of Bangladesh president and his family, and his family introduced apartheid, an unwritten ban of hiring of all <coughs> Hindu minorities by the military, government, and police, and removed Bengali from the preamble of the constitution by adding Islamic verses written in Arabic, thus making the Hindu, Buddhist, and Christian minority third-class citizens, although 90 to 95% of the three million murdered in nine months in the 1971 uh, genocide were Hindu minority and the rest secularist, secularist Muslim. My book reveals that over 49 million Hindus have vanished from the land from the 1947 partition of India to 2001, as calculated from the Bangladeshi census. This was quoted by Illinois' Congressman Dole on the House floor. I wonder how victims would feel if Chicago renamed the street after someone who turned South Africa back to apartheid, or someone who remade Germany a Christian nation, making non-Christians third-class citizens and pardoning mass murderers of Jews and gypsies. This is to inform you that I am not connected with any political group of Bangladesh and my family has vic was victim of a prior era, but not during President Rahman's rule. Uh, and then he, he you know, uh, directs him if he needs any more uh, information, he can contact him himself. So this is something here in the United States, no other group, Jews, Christians, would ever allow uh, a street to be named after a man who took a nation that was secular, which like Bangladesh, and turned it into a Muslim republic. Bangladesh today is a Muslim republic per its constitution. Bangladesh, the population of Bangladesh, it was 30% Muslim. 
I'm 30% Hindu at the time, uh, I think in 1970, am I correct? 47. It was 40, uh, 47, it was 30% uh, Hindu. Today, it's 9%. And that's because not all that was just immigration. A lot of people are, a lot of uh, uh, Bengali Hindus are leaving Bangladesh, but it's not all because of immigration. In his book, 49 million of these people are missing. Where are they? We know that in the, in the, in the 1971 genocide, the, the quote-unquote liberation genocide that made Bangladesh a Muslim state, that 3 million people were killed, 90 to 95% of them were Hindu minority. The Hindus were specifically targeted. And this, was, and this, this man is responsible for that, and his name, they named a street after him. So this is something, this, this is the type of project that I think that we here as Justice for Hindus could, could uh, uh, reasonably work for, to have this street renamed, a, a publicity campaign to have this street renamed. So I, that's the, you know, I just wanted to introduce you to ISPAD and um, their facility here. You can find them at ISPAD1947.com, <coughs> right? ISPAD1947.com? ISPAD, ISPAD, 1947.org. So again, we thank ISPAD for allowing us and hosting us here today. So uh, as I said, right, we became a U.S. corporation. So uh, who we are, Justice for Hindus is a U.S. corporation formed in 2013 by a group of students and activists living in New York City who were called to take action against the brutality suffered by the Hindu people at the hands of the Pakistani and Bangladeshi governments as well as Hindus being antagonized by similar elements within the nation of India and abroad. Since then, our mission has brought into food working for Hindus uh, internationally. So a lot of you know people know that, or Hindus know, but the outside world doesn't know that India used to be one continent. It used to be uh, a, a Hindu land. Um, and then uh, there was Islamic invasion. And uh, many regions in the north of India that are now Pakistan and Bangladesh became heav heavily Islamized. And then after the British colonial period, when India was partitioned, the Muslims were given their own countries in Bangladesh and in Pakistan. But the Hindus that live inside those nations uh, experience, th these are Muslim republics, it's in their constitution, but they experience uh, horrific uh, uh, genocide. So uh, we support and advocate for the following objectives. Presenting the current injustices being enacted upon Hindus internationally, so no matter where they are, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, informing the public of the history of invasion, imperialism, colonialism, anti-indigenism in South Asia, and identifying their under underlying ideological and political basis. So a lot of organizations um, focus only on uh, Islamic atrocities against Hindus, but we know that there's a bigger issue here. It's Isla the uh, Islamic ideology is is one issue, but then we do have to deal. There's, we are dealing with remnants of British colonialism. It was because of British, of the uh, uh, British intrigues that that India was partitioned. It was under the British um, Raj at, at the end of the British Raj that it, that uh, this was made possible. And the British also had their own uh, anti-Hindu agenda going on in India. And these are the types of ideas that we, as Justice for Hindus want to explore and talk about. We want to talk about the ideological basis, not of just one group, because anti-Hinduism is not, the, is not the, the agenda of just one group. It's the agenda of many groups. Um, and advocating for legal, social, political justice for Hindus living in their native lands of the Indian subcontinent and beyond. Uh, so we denounce violence. Justice for Hindus denounces violence and aims to achieve its objectives using peaceful means such as petitioning governments, education and demonstrations. We are not affiliated with any political party or religious ideology and welcome all like-minded people to join us in working towards justice for Hindus. So um, like this kind of project is something that it's a civil project. It's something, you know, changing the, the name of the street. Um, we don't, you know, obviously we're not going to be involved in doing anything that's illegal. Um, so we, so our activities in the United States. So in the United States so far, our activities have been surrounded through information campaigns. Uh, JFS, JFA Justice for Hindus has engaged in several information campaigns to inform the public of the human rights violations being experienced by Hindus in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and other nations. These campaigns include attending street demonstrations with banners advertising our position and directing people to our website. Uh, we also print up flyers with short facts on the situation in India and other places to hand out to the public and uh, to pique their interest. So, these are just uh, these are some old flyers that we have, but 
they're like palm cards. So, you know, we write a, a brief, you know, description, who we are, what's going on. Uh, you know, this one is about, uh, uh, the front side was about um, uh, apartheid in Pakistan, and then the back side was about the genocide in Bangladesh and the Jamaat-e Islami, who uh, is uh, one of the Islamist parties that is responsible for a lot of uh, killings that goes on there in Bangladesh. So, you know, we hand these out. It has our, our website on it to bring to the website so that they can get more information. Uh, so we started, our first demonstration was in June of 2008, at two, in uh, 2013. So we did a demonstration in Washington Square Park. Uh, here you can see Suchetta was there with us. She's, she's been with us since the very beginning. Um, and this is where, this was our first one. And, you know, we made a sign talking about um, uh, just bringing attention to the, the genocide that's going on against Hindus in Pakistan and Bangladesh and handed out our flyer. So that was our first one. So then, uh, June 30th, 2013, we did a demonstration in the Square Park. Um, the, the, we were there with some of the Bengali community, and, and uh, that one, you know, we had some different kinds of signs, and again, we handed out flyers and information. Uh, we, we didn't uh, organize this one, but we went, uh, uh, Melanie went to this one. She was our uh, uh, representative there. This one was actually put together, you can see, uh, our, our Rish Sahani and Narain Kataria put this one together. This is the August 14th, 2013 demonstration outside the Pakistan consulate. Um, you know, Pakistan is, Pakistan had a, a Hindu population, I think, of 50, 45. In, uh, 45%? 45 in 1947. In 1947, it was 25%. And now it's 1%. And, and, um, and they still are having massive. You know, uh, the, the, the Hindus of, of Pakistan are, are still attacked. They have problems maintaining their temples. Um, and a lot of them emigrate to India, but a, a big problem is that when they get to India, they're, they're kind of languished in concentration camps because they're not citizens of India. And India is a secular country. It's not a Hindu country. So just because you're a Hindu and you go there, you're not going to get preferential treatment. You're going to be treated like almost any other refugee. Um, and so the problem is, but the problem stems from these in, in these uh, Hindu refugees are flooding into India and are in these refugee camps, unfortunately. But the problem is that because they're being attacked and murdered um, in, um, in in Pakistan on our website, I didn't put it in the presentation. I probably should have, and I got it um, now. You know, this is our first presentation here, so now that I'm doing it, I'm thinking of more things that I have to add. But we've been documenting a lot of these. That, I mean, 25 girls are kidnapped in Pakistan. 25 Hindu girls are kidnapped and forcibly converted to Islam. Um, in Pakistan every single month. The latest one, well, uh, Angli Megwar, was a very big case that's going on right now where she was, I think she was 12, she, she disappeared from her home and then she wound up in the, in, in the area, you know, with, with a group of Muslims and they, uh, and the, the parents fired, filed a report, they said, our daughter has been kidnapped, she's 12 years old, she did not run away, she's not trying to marry anyone and uh, I don't, the last time I heard there was a big case. Uh, the the court verified that the, the Islamic court verified that she was 12 years old and that she disappeared under suspicious circumstances. But she still wasn't allowed to go back to her family, and she was put in in a girls' home in Pakistan. Um, and this is a recurring in Pakistan: the kidnapping of these young Hindu girls. And for some reason, they're not allowed to go back to their families, and they wind up in these facilities where they wind up, and then they seriously end up being married to, um, uh, in the end, they mysteriously end up marrying um, out of their faith. So, uh, right, okay, so then uh, November 10, 2013, there was the election of Bangladesh conference, so the, the politics in Bangladesh are, are very complicated, uh -huh. as the Dastar is known as they're from Bangladesh. There is, um, there's two major parties. There's the BNP, which is the Bangladeshi National Party, and then there's the Awami League. Both of them, even though Bangladesh has Islam written into its constitution, both of these um, parties, the Awami League and the British National Party, they kind of try to put on a secularist front a little bit. They don't openly preach uh, an Islamist message. But um, under them, there are, uh, especially the British, the Bangladeshi National Party, the, uh, they have front groups like the Jamaati Islami, which is openly Islamist. The, the problem in Bangladesh is this. You have two parties that are fighting with each other that want power. 
the British, the Bangladeshi National Party, and the Awami League. Whenever there's an attack on Hindus by Islamist radicals, either party can blame it on the other. So if the Awami League is in power, and there's Islamist attacks on temples and killings of, of Hindus in Bangladesh, the, the, the Bangladeshi National Party can say, look, the Awami League is cr creating an unsafe situation, you're not doing your job here. So, and then uh, vice versa, when the Brit Bangladeshi National Party is in power, if there's attacks on the Hindus, the Awami League can say, well, look, look, look what you're doing, look what you're doing. You're not doing a good job of protecting this country. Um, but the, the thing is that um, the, when you talk to the Hindus in, in, in Bangladesh, they know that this is all just a ploy, that, that Islam is part of the constitution. And a lot of these parties, especially the Bangladeshi National Party, has an Islamist agenda. And so they send out their front groups like Jamaati Islami to do the dirty work for them. They want these temples destroyed. They want the Hindus out of the country. They want them terrorized. And so they send them out. The you know the Jamaati Islami goes and and burns the temples, burns the houses. Um, but just in 2013, there was something you know there was something like a thousand you know houses were burned. Or I have all the statistics that, um, up on the website. But there, I mean you know there was hundreds of temple attacks and, and injuries so and, and um, all this kind of stuff. They, could the, 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 it, they, they go hand in hand. The, 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 the political parties and the front groups go hand in hand. So the, they send out their front groups like Jamaat Islami they and they you know they go, they attack and they destroy and then the, the, the Bangladesh National Party can say, you know, well, we're gonna try to make all this better, just vote for us, vote for us. And then they get the Hindus scared to vote for them. You know, they say, you know, vote for us and we'll make these attacks stop. <coughs> But you know, it's the same people. They go, they're, you know, they're, they're fisting blood. So that's what this um, was about. There was, um, they showed a movie. Also, um, okay. attending at that lecture, we were there. But also, there was the Hindu Forum of Europe and the Hindu American Foundation. That it was put on by the um, uh, British Hindu Buddhist Christian Unity Council. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Bangladesh. I keep saying this, but I say British. I keep saying British because uh, Bangladesh Hindu Buddhist Christian Unity Council. It lives in Forest Hills. Um, so April 27, 2014, um, the BJP, the overseas friends of the BJP put up a, a Modi election yak that they wanted uh, Modi to get elected. So we attended that with some of our friends. These are um, some of our friends from, from India, right here, Vijay Kumar. He's our, our connection in India, um, Justice for Hindus India. And there were some other uh, young people there that we met at the event. Um, and so we did that one. Uh, June 14th, 2014, we went to there's, there's the Festival of India Parade, um, and uh, we took the banners down the Avenue, um, and we got, uh, uh, we might have been a little bit too uh, uh, upfront with that one, I don't know if they appreciated it completely, but uh, we took our banner down Fifth Avenue in Manhattan, and then we went to the, um, uh, the festival in, in uh, Washington Square Park. Uh, afterwards, and again, handed out our literature. And again, these were our friends from uh, India that, that came up with us, our India division, uh, uh, Vijay Kumar and uh, Sri Kamkar from India. They, they came here, they were working here, they were on a work visa, and they've since gone back, and they're helping us develop our Justice for Hindus India division. Um, in September 6, 2014, we went to the Bengali Madonna Society, which they had a picnic upstate New York, and we spoke before uh, a large group of Bengali Hindus about issues in Bangladesh, um, you know, the fact that it's an Islamist state, the fact that they're under attack, the fact that they're constantly in danger of their temples being burned, their homes being burned, their daughters being kidnapped. Um, and um, and so we got a, a good response from that, and you can see that, you know, we, we got them, we endeared them to our cause. Um, we've been here once before we came here. We didn't put on an event, but we did come here. We just, it was a conference on petition history. So obviously, since this pattern puts on conferences about the partition itself and what happened, um, we you know we come here to support them. Um, we were at the September 27, 2014 rally outside the United Nations um, to support Modi, and it was there that there was a big um, on the website when our events. You'll see we had all the pictures. There was us, and then on the other side there was the opposition to Modi, and there was a lot of Kashmiri separatists there. So actually, uh, Kashmir is uh, is another issue. That, that we need to focus on. Because Kashmir is one of those, after the partition, Kashmir 
Unfortunately, for, for some reason, who knows why, it fell into dispute. There was a lot of Hindus in Kashmir. And then um, in 1991, 1990, 1991, there was a massive genocide and exodus of the Hindus out of Kashmir because the Pakistani Islamist um, Army's military and um, separatists started killing them and throwing them out of the valley. And um, since then, this, this region of Kashmir, this region of Kashmir has been under dispute since the partition, but um, uh, it's, they've, they've done a lot of uh, religious cleansing there. And uh, on the other side, there's a lot of these Kashmir separatists. So we were able to, you know, we brought our side, and, and these, you know, we, we, we you know, were able to try to face them. We weren't, the Hindus weren't prepared, you know, for that. They knew it was going to be a, you know, a Modi versus anti-Modi rally, but then it kind of started breaking out to this, the oldest Kashmir separatist name. And you know we were trying to uh, face them, but we do need we need intellectual support to you know Kashmir does belong should belong to India, but also what about their I mean we don't talk about the Kashmiri Panda genocide and Exodus. Why why isn't the world talking about that? Why why is it that that you know everyone's talking about about Palestine? Not that they shouldn't be, but why is it that the world is so focused on this and all on the college campuses? Everyone is. You know, Palestine, 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 Palestine. But what about Kashmir? You know, what about what about what about uh, different regions? That this this isn't the only region, but it was the the, the latest one. You know, why aren't are why aren't the college campus kids talking about this? They're I mean, a lot of these people that are involved in the Justice for Palestine movement, they're not Palestinian, they're not Muslim, they have nothing to do with this conflict, but they care because it's a social justice issue, but it's because people are talking about it constantly and they're bringing these issues to the campus and they just are relentless in their media campaign to get it and so people start talking about it. So if we start talking about Kashmir, 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 the, you know, the pan genocide in Kashmir, we could, you know, we want to do things like that. We want to get people on talking about, you know, our issues on the college campuses. Um, we went to the November 16, 2014 Hindu American Foundation membership drive, um, and uh, we kind of, as a group, we all went there together and tried to kind of, uh, uh, Hindu American Foundation is, uh, does a very, very good job. I get all, we get all of our uh, human rights reports from them and all of our uh, statistics and information. They do a very good job. They go to, they go to Bangladesh, they go to Pakistan, but they go to other places too. They go to, to Fiji Islands, they go um, to uh, Trinidad, and they write on the social um, justice issues that are in those regions, and they provide invaluable uh, um, information. I always post their latest human rights reports up on the website. If you go to the website, one of the tabs is um, uh, uh, it says half reports, and if you go there, you can download their, their latest uh, Hindu American Foundation reports. They're a really good organization, and so we, as Justice for Hindus, want to support them and promote them. Um, and then finally, lastly, the last thing that we went to was on February 1st, 2015. We went to the Chief Minister's of uh, Pradesh. Uh, uh, we met with, well, we didn't meet the Chief Ministers, but we joined with them uh, to launch Friends of MP, which is Friends of Madhya Pradesh in India. Um, and so, you know, we went to that event. So we tried to keep ourselves active. So we made contacts. We're not affiliated with these organizations. We made contacts, friendly contacts with the Indian American Intellectuals Forum, the Bangladesh Hindu Buddhist Christian Unity Council, Hindu American Foundation, the Malhi Social Development Organization in Pakistan, uh, the Indian Subcontinent Partition Documentation Project, Overseas Friends of the uh, BJP, Canadian Hindu Advocacy in Canada, and the Hari Rama Foundation uh, Mission in Pakistan. So then, just briefly about our website, justiceforhindus.org. Um, when you go there, I'm seeing now, now that there's the time, the next time I make a PowerPoint, I'm going to have to incorporate the, the website into it a whole lot more and show a lot more about the website. I don't know. Um, yeah, we'll do that. I'll say that for next time, you know, live and learn. But uh, through our website, we compile information and stories from Hindus across the world. So, you know, we have a lot, we have a very big um, media presence on Facebook. We have lots of Facebook groups. We have lots of people that contact us on Facebook. We have young people in Pakistan, Bangladesh. So we get a lot of news that sometimes that is either in Bangla language or is in, or is in Urdu that is not published in English media or just doesn't make the media. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't make the media at all. And so we have a lot of uh, agents in these countries that will send us information that this is what's going on now, will send us pictures, and then we can post it up on our website. Uh, we have contacts in many nations, who, like I said, that's Pakistan, Nepal, India, and Trinidad, who send us news and, and information pieces. So we try to, 
we're more we're grassroots. You know, we try to get people actually involved, especially the youth on the ground involved. You know, they can they can send us the information. This is what happened here. You know, and and a lot of times this won't be reported if there if there's um you know if there's an attack at a temple. Let's say it's not major, nobody's killed, but they come in and they turn over tables and they try you know they drag a girl away in order to you know to abuse her. This might not make national headlines, but it's something that's still important and and. And we try to give these young people, these youth, a voice that they feel as though somebody is listening to them and that the information is getting out there. And then, of course, this website is international, it's on Facebook, so it gets everywhere. Um, we use our, our website to advertise events, meetings, and to show the world our presence. So not just ours, we have our meetings that we go to, but you know, other events, other similar events that are going on. So if ISPAD is having an event or the, of Bangladesh, uh, the Bangladesh uh, Hindu Buddhist Christian Union Council, the Council or the Union American Intellectual Forum, they're having something that's going on. We try to let people know because we want to show people that it's not just us, but that there's a growing global consciousness for uh, social justice for Hindus. Um, and our website helps show others that we are internationally connected and gives Hindus a voice that is heard by all. So, justice for Hindus in South Asia, we have made some inroads into South Asia. So there's, we have the JFH Tripura Clinic. This is uh, Justice for Hindus Tripura Clinic. India is headed by Dr. Vidhan Nath Chowdhury. Uh, Dr. Chowdhury has opened a relief clinic in Tripura, Assam. He has many contacts across India and can travel to JFH for, for JFH purposes. And uh, he keeps uh, the South Asian community uh, connected in India, Nepal, and Pakistan. So he's, he's a medical doctor. He, he, he lives in, so Assam is in Northeast India. Assam has a lot of problems with not just, it has illegal immigration from Bangladesh because Bangladesh has a lot of poverty, um, a lot of, it doesn't matter, people of all different religions cross over the border into Assam because it, it borders Bangladesh, but there's also many Hindus who escape. If when you go to our website, we have a, a link called uh, Three Para Clinic, or yeah, Three Para Clinic, and you can see all the people, you know, he takes pictures of all the people that he helps. These are all Hindus. These are Hindus that had their homes burned, their spouse is killed, their daughter is raped, um, their land stolen, and a lot of time they flee Bangladesh, they cross the border into India, and they have absolutely nothing in their destitute, and they're poverty stricken, and they're full, they're sick. So um, with his limited resources that he has had, he has opened up, uh, with the best that he can, he's opened up a relief clinic to bring these people in to document them, and uh, he does have a network of people that send him donations, so when he, he's able to give people medicine, and for really people, that, you know, especially elderly people that are going to perish and have absolutely nothing, he's able to give them something, you know, the money for food, he's able to help them. So he takes care of that, and he also travels to other regions uh, to open up JFH, um, not clinics, but JFH branches when necessary. So then uh, we also have Justice for Hindus Bangladesh, which uh, I think has been our most successful one over in South Asia so far. Um, so we have chapters in uh, Chittagong and Dhaka. Panaki Das is uh, the chair of JVH Bangladesh, um, and uh, you can see they opened up. They opened up sometime early in January, and this picture down here is Panaki, and you know this is our Bangladesh team. The the Bangladeshi Hindus uh, and the Pakistani Hindus, I think, because their plight is so dire, I think they're the most serious about actually coming together and organizing and doing something. They. Um, um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. This was the, the doctor division, and then this was the Chittagong division that opened. So, uh, what oh, talking about the JFH Bangladesh, what, what are, do we want to accomplish with them? So, um, in, in South Asia, but we'll just use Bangladesh as a, an example, we want to uh, work on creating uh, groups on the local level in each village or district. So, we want, we want them to have like local um, Support, but then we want to create state level networks connecting the local groups. So all these different local groups, it's hard to travel, especially in these third world countries, or uh, where you know it's difficult and there's a lot of Bangladesh has a lot of problems with uh, strikes and, and transportation strikes that are all constantly going on. And quite frankly, it's dangerous, especially if you're Hindu to travel far distances alone, especially if you're a woman. Um, so and then we want to create a central program for all JFH local groups to follow, syncing them with the JFH. Uh, South Asia or Bangladesh state level group, uh, create regular meetings for local groups monthly and state level uh, to be determined. Uh, create a system of reporting and activism at local level that reflects local needs that can then be sent to the state level. 
uh, draw local members to state level conferences where all local issues can be discussed and state and local plans can be presented. Um, uh, the state chair can then help appoint local leaders and form local committees. And the state chair can also arrange for state level meetings and attract all local groups. So we, again, we want to we want to push a local agenda, but then we want to also link everyone together in on, under a national agenda because the, you know in a lot of places when you go the, the Hindus are very uh, there's a lot of factions factionalization and regionalization with Hindus and that kind of stops them from working together. So it's kind of hard to get them away from their their regionalism. They like the Hindus tend to like their their local stuff. But um, we want to start linking them together, uh, linking these, you know, creating cells and linking them together on the national level. Um, so what did I say? Uh, okay. So I'm I just I, I'm nearing the end of my part, and then I'm going to hand it over to the next um, person. But um, we also so we've got we've done some inroad in South Asia. We've gotten there, but that we don't want to just do South Asia. We want too many, just as Hindus, I think the thing that's going to make us different is that a lot of people that we've attracted are actually from the Caribbean, not just from India, but our Facebook presence, I've noticed know, there's, um, there's Fiji. There's lots of problems, there's lots of things going on in Fiji that we don't know about. And I'm going to talk about that very briefly, uh, uh, some in the back so that they do. But um, of course there's Guyana, Trinidad and the Caribbean, including Suriname. And um, uh, Melanie Balmick is going to be talking to us about um, uh, Guyana. And this is something that's completely, a lot of Hindu organizations, they only they have a problem, with, or what we believe at Justice for Hindu, we believe one of the problems is that they only focus on South Asia and they don't focus on the global diaspora, but we're also having problems. African nations, a lot of Hindus don't know that there's a lot of Hindus in South Africa and there's a lot of Hindus growing in Guyana now. Um, not Guyana, Ghana. Kenya. Kenya. I just met a Hindu from Tanzania the, uh, the, uh, the other day. So um, there's a growing uh, diaspora there, of course. Europe, in Europe, the Hindus might not have tons of social justice issues, but they're a good contact and they're very worried about what's happening in their own countries and to Hindus around the world. Of course, here in North America and uh, South America. So we don't just want to be, it just as Hindus wants to uh, uh, identify itself and make it unique by not being just a purely South Asia organization. So uh, what we need funds for, we need funds to print banners, flyers, and posters for events, uh, to place ads. We want to do things like place ads in subways and buses. You see other groups. Um, there's, there's other groups who I'm not going to mention, but they like to, they publish, uh, they uh, make posters about what's going on, Islamic atrocities, and they put it up in, in, in subways. And that's what we want to do. We want people, but the Bangladesh genocide, the Pakistan genocide, the Kashmir issue, what's going on in Fiji, what's going on in... Guyana, what's even going on in India itself, um, and and Nepal, uh, um, and um, we need to print literature for handing out, but we also want to do charity relief efforts, and we want to also be able to travel to these other nations to actually physically set up um, our organizations. And, you know, we, I do have help through distance, but you know, you do want to go there. It's it, it is difficult to set up organizations through distance. So some of our planned activities, we want to do a demonstration outside the Fiji consulate in the Methodist Church against the Christian state in Fiji and the persecution of Fiji Hindus. The Methodist Church is trying to, is pushing for, maybe the Methodist Church official, I don't want to say official, but the Methodist branches within the Fiji Islands are pushing for uh, a Christian state and are pushing uh, Christian persecution on uh, Hindus. Again, uh, we're not a one, we're not a one, um, issue group. We don't just focus on uh, Islamic atrocities, we also want to focus on Christian atrocities, we want to focus on uh, colonialist, British colonialist aftermath and things like that. We want to increase, of course, increase awareness of Islamic atrocities against Hindus internationally, um, exposing and highlighting the effects of British colonials on Hindus internationally and demanding reparations. Um, uh, someone else is coming, she's going to get her part, she's almost here. Uh, Mohini is from Britain, and um, she's going to be talking about that. We also want to expose the, um, we want to uh, eradicate the Gandhi myth. Gandhi um, is not what a lot of people think he was, Mahatma Gandhi. And um, Mohini, coming from the British Empire, is going to be talking a lot about that. We want to do a protest outside the Gandhi statue um, in Union Square. We want to do a pro protest um, in September requesting reparations for the Goa Inquisition. We forget all about the Goa Inquisition. 
you know, other groups, other groups are not afraid to um, uh, bring up these histories and say we want reparations. Did anyone just see in the news that Greece just says they're going to they want reparations from Germany for the Nazi era? So if if Greece is allowed to get reparations from Germany for the Nazi era, why can't we get reparations from the Catholic Church for the Goa Inquisition and what they did in Goa? But, you know, they, there was it was it was a very bloody and cruel and vicious Inquisition, and they've never even apologized. No apology, apologies, and the Hindus need reparations for that. We want to organize non, the non-Indian Hindu diasporas, and we also want to induct Hindu converts such as myself to the cause. I believe that because I come from the other side, I, you know, Hindu converts have something genuine, uh, unique to offer to the Hindu diaspora because they know what it's like to be on the other side. They know the tactics of the other side, and they know what their thinking is. Um, right. So, a group specifically in the, in America and the United States, one big thing here, especially here in. New York City and the New York region, we want to organize the Caribbean Hindu population for social justice with special emphasis on Guyana, and I'm going to give that over to uh, Melanie in a moment. Um, we want to go to college campuses to organize Hindu youth for social justice and media justice. Aditi is going to be here, she's uh, going to law school right now, and she's going to be talking to us about media justice. Um, uh, right, a lot of these other groups, they go to college campuses. Jewish groups go to college campuses, the Palestinian groups go to college campuses, they agitate, they create organizations, they make speeches, they, you know, they do a lot of stuff, they go to these college campuses and they get people on their side. So we want to do the same thing, but for Hindus. We want to go, we, you know, these are non-Hindu people, but if, if Jews and, and, and Muslims and Christians can get them working on their side and, and, and uh, helping them, we can do the same. Um, we also want to do, we want to create ch uh, charities for poverty-stricken Hindus all around the world. And we want to focus on uh, women's rights, Dalit's rights, and minority Hindu rights with the Hindu perspective. So the reason we want to do that, you might know a lot of groups, especially leftists and Marxists, will use, they'll take issues in Hinduism where women, they feel that women are either being abused or that Dalits, quote unquote Dalits, we know that there's no such thing as a Dalit in Hindu scripture, but they feel like these Dalits are being abused. If we can get there first and we take care of our own women's rights and we take care of our own quote unquote Dalit's rights, then um, we don't. Then we're closing the door for these Marxists to come in and take the space and and to demonize us, which is what they like to do. And of course, to travel and open branches internationally. So uh, those are our planned activities, and uh, that's the end of my part of the presentation. So I think the, uh, I'm just going to hand it over quickly to. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Melanie uh, Balmek. Um, she can come up here with uh, one of our Justice Hindus representatives who came. She's born in this country, but her family is from Guyana, and I'm just going to set up her PowerPoint presentation with her.